On day one, I started off as a normal bronzo. Oh wow, it's a beautiful day. I wonder what it has in store for me. I then immediately got bitten by a vampire that snuck up behind me. Ah, what is this pain? Hold still, it'll just be a few seconds. What are you doing to me? You have no choice but to join me. I felt so much pain. I wanted to know what was going to happen to me. Wait, are you turning me into a vampire? No, please don't. Just what I needed to quench my thirst. You'll be fine till we meet again. <laughs> I tried asking them some questions, but then they vanished into the distance as fast as the speed of light. And I felt like I was starting to get a fever. Hey, where do you think you're going? My body, I don't feel so good. I then transformed into a vampire and went from feeling sick to feeling powerful in a matter of seconds. Wait a minute, I feel incredibly strong. Wow, I even have more hearts and a bit of armor. I then noticed that instead of hunger, I had blood drops. Does that mean I can only drink blood now? I then looked into the sky and noticed that the sun was agitating me, causing me to feel weak. So I ran into a cave for shelter. Oh, my skin. I can't take this sunlight anymore. Suddenly, I started getting attacked by some spiders, and I had no choice but to run away. Oh, I feel too weak to fight. I need to hide. I then found a shady area in the forest where I stopped to get some rest. It's only noon, and I already feel feel like it's been the longest day of my life. I felt a wave of sleepiness take over me. I needed to get some sleep, but it was daytime. On night two, I woke up in darkness, feeling way stronger than ever before. I had so much energy. I felt like I could do anything. I then realized I needed a base. So I got ready to start building. Now that I'm a night owl, it's the perfect time to get to work. I went through the forest in search of some woods so that I could make wooden tools. My senses were way stronger now too. I can smell things that are miles away. As I was chopping down some wood, I sensed someone near me. I then saw a pack of wolves, so I tried sucking their blood but all at once they attacked me oh no i had to use my wooden sword to kill them all i even got some blood from the last one i then realized i hated the taste it felt right but tasted so wrong gross i thought vampires loved this after killing the wolves i continued searching for more food and found some cows nearby at least these guys don't attack me when i try sucking their blood all of a sudden i turned one of the cows into a vampire cow um, good luck with that. After healing up, I found the perfect spot and brought out some of my materials, such as stone and more wood, to start building my base. This place is gonna be pretty sweet. Just then, I started feeling tired. I knew I had to get some rest after all that building. Do vampires even sleep? I then noticed some sunlight peek through the trees. I needed to finish my base before I feel it hurt my health. All right, I gotta go inside before the sun comes up. On night three, I woke up from my slumber and went exploring and ended up finding a vampire forest. My people must be here. I honestly felt intimidated. There might be some cool looking vampires wandering around. And after a little bit of searching, I finally found one. Hey, I'm Bronzo. I'm kind of new to this lifestyle. Do you know anything about it? I'm Luca. So you're one of the new ones, huh? I am too. I don't really know much. All I know is that when I'm hungry, it's game over. Yeah, tell me about it. I then asked them if they knew how one could become stronger so I could be the most powerful vampire around. I'll tell you a little secret. I heard that if you find Dracula, you'll be invincible. He knows everything. Dracula. I wonder where they may be. I thanked them for the advice and headed out to continue exploring. As I walked through the forest, I ran into some vampire hunters who were hanging out around a fire. Capture him. These people were out to get me, so I sprinted out of the woods, trying to escape them. They were definitely skilled in killing vampires because they outran me and started attacking. I tried to fight back, but they were so strong. Uh, I'm gonna make it. I'm stronger and faster than they are. I managed to kill one of them and continued running. From nights four through five, I went mining for some iron and coal. Look at all this iron. I used the iron to craft some iron tools, such as a pickaxe, axe, and sword. And I noticed that I already had some armor applied to me. I guess vampires just have thicker skin. Aha, now I can defend myself. Just then, I heard a woman crying for help within the caves. Oh no, she's being attacked by zombies. I should help her out. I launched myself into battle and began mowing down the undead with my brand new weapon. Get away from her. Eventually, I defeated all the zombies and I saved the endangered lady. 
Woo! Are you okay? Oh, yeah, thanks for that. Just then, she noticed I was a vampire. <gasps> You're one of them. Stay away. It's my first day on the job. I can't do this. Relax. I'm not that type of vampire. I'm a good guy. I feast on animals. Oh, thank goodness. I'm Buffy, by the way. What did you mean by first day on the job? Well, this is awkward. I'm a vampire hunter. <gasps> Gasp! Maybe you and I don't have to become enemies, and we could be friends instead. Oh, I like that, actually. Hey, since you're a vampire hunter and all that, would you happen to know where Dracula lives? He's like public enemy number one, right? Of course. That's the first thing they teach us in vampire hunting class. Great. You can show me where he is. Oh, by the way, I got a place for you to crash. Let's go. Buffy and I returned back to the base. I began making a room for her and added some decorations to make the place more inviting. How do you like it? It's great. Dracula actually lives right up the hill. Oh, that makes sense. I left Buffy at the base and set off for Dracula. From nights six through eight, I finally found Dracula's mansion. Now let's get some answers, shall we? I entered the home and didn't see anybody in sight. Hello? Is anyone home? All I saw is a cute bat in the corner, who then transformed into Dracula himself. Whoa! I was so amazed by his transformation. He then introduced himself. Hello there, little fledgling. The name is Dracula. All vampires can do this little magic trick, but only at night and if you get to a higher level. So, what brings you into my home? Well, I'm new to this. I heard you are the one who knows it all. Please share your knowledge with me. I wanted to know how I could become more powerful like him, so I asked him for advice. You are going to need blood to grow stronger. Lots of it. Here, follow me. He then told me I needed an altar of inspiration to start off, and he gave me the recipe to make one. You know, sucking blood isn't really my thing. I knew that blood was what I needed to achieve my goal, but that was going to feel impossible after I got a taste of it. Don't you worry. There is a vegan option, but if you need to make a blood grinder... Dracula then gave me a meat grinder that he didn't use anymore. I love sucking blood, so just take it. Um, okay. He then warned me about who I should look out for. Be careful with the werewolves. They are our arch enemies. Our arch enemies are werewolves? Sounds a bit predictable. Dracula didn't seem to like my joke, but he went on to tell me about the alpha werewolf who has built an entire army dedicated to killing all vampires. Ooh, I hope I never meet him. Sounds like an evil guy. I thanked him for all the advice and for the meat grinder. Not sure how it's gonna make me vegan, but at least I won't be eating people. Thanks for everything. Goodbye. On nights nine through 10, I headed back to the base. I can't wait to test out my new gadget. As soon as I got there, I saw that my base was being ravaged by werewolves. I'll save you, Buffy. I started killing some of them by slashing them with my sword. And some even ran away as I was doing so. I then noticed the alpha wolf was there. He then stormed off and left me in the middle of chaos. I should have bit the wolf when I had the chance. I wonder where he's going now. The wolves had destroyed anything that was in their way. After spending some time rebuilding the base, I went to go get some sand to make glass. I then used the glass to make some bottles so that I could prepare for my altar of inspiration. For nights 11 to 13, I was all prepared to make my altar of inspiration. This should be everything I need for this altar. I placed it down and saw that I need a lot, and I mean a lot of blood, in order to use the altar to level up. I should make a cow farm. I started by making a nice pin for the cows, complete with a little roof, just in case it rains. This looks good for some cows. Now to wrangle them up. I found a village, and while all the mere mortals were sleeping, I stole some of their wheat. This will work great to have those cows follow me. I then found a bunch of cows and had them follow me back to my base. Welcome to your new home, cows. Sorry that most of you won't live to see the sunrise. I breeded some of the cows and then killed all the adults to start my cycle of killing and breeding. This should be enough meat for now. I then took the raw meat I got, placed it in the grinder, and watched the blood drip into the blood container. Looks yummy, but also disgusting. I took all the blood and added it to the altar, giving me my 
first vampire powers. Awesome, regeneration. Now I can regenerate my hearts quicker. On nights 14 through 16, I went exploring the vampire forest again in search of more answers. I then ran into some vampire hunters who were having a conversation. Not these guys again. It seems like they're talking about something. Is that? Steve? Steve started talking to them about his plan to hunt Dracula, and there was no way I was going to let that happen. Boys, for years, Dracula has been drinking our people's blood. Soon, we will attack. Prepare for battle. Huzzah! It was only a matter of time before there was total war between the hunters and the vampires, and I still had to deal with the alpha wolf freak. I gotta do something about this. I took that information with me and ran away before they could see me. Suddenly, I ran into some hellhounds who were very feisty. Look, canines, I'm busy. I don't have time for this. I killed the hellhounds by using my sword, and this was the perfect opportunity to use my regeneration abilities. I then headed back home, finding some sheep along the way, and sucked their blood to heal up. Oh look, some wool. I was finally able to make a bed. So I ran as fast as I could back home. All right, it's good to be back. Now where will I sleep? I built a coffin out of some of the wood and then got some rest for the night because vampires sleep in coffins, not beds. On day 17, I dreamt of the alpha werewolf. What do you want with me? I despise all vampires. They're leeches, sucking the blood of anything that moves. That's not true. We're pretty cool. He then told me he was working on a plan to eradicate all vampires. I will put an end to this misery. You know, not all vampires enjoy sucking blood. In fact, I prefer to do things in a humane way. Nonsense. I don't care about what you have to say. Why can't we just make peace with each other? I vowed to stop him, since he didn't want peace between the two species. Good luck with that, you filthy beast. With the help of the Vampire Hunters and our Werewolf Alliance, all of you will die. I then woke up from that horrible nightmare and wanted to share it with Buffy. On nights 18 through 21, I told Buffy about my weird dream. Buffy, you'll never guess what happened. I told her about how the alpha werewolf wanted to eradicate all the vampires, and she then told me her plan. We're not letting that happen. I'll help you take him down. I appreciate your help, but I think you shouldn't stick around. Huh? Why is that? Although Buffy really wanted to help me, I couldn't let her stay with me anymore. What I was about to tell her was either going to make or break our friendship. You see, I can't resist myself anymore. Every time I look at you, I have a sudden urge to suck your blood. Oh, really? Well, I'm flattered. You know, I can still help you. I really believe in you, Bronzo. You sure? I don't want to hurt you. I actually really like you, Buffy. I'm sure of it. We'll get through this together. I felt myself grow fonder of Buffy every moment we spent together, so it was going to be a challenge not to kill her. I agreed to let Buffy help me fight the werewolf, and I then went mining for some more iron to make some iron armor and complete my set. On nights 22 through 26, I decided I needed more allies, so I went to conquer a village. This seems like a good place. I began to conquer the villagers by defending the beacon, which then made the villagers angry towards me. Luckily, some vampires noticed and came to help. I am here to claim this land and the people in it. Either you fight with me or you're against me. It's Morbin time! The villagers brought out their weapons and tried defending themselves against me by starting their attack. The vampires and I fought against the villagers, killing most of them along the way. Wait a minute, what's going on? Slowly, the village started transforming into a vampire forest, and a couple of villagers turned into vampires. Well, this is not what I expected. Luckily, I captured some of the normal villagers before they escaped. I then traded the farmer vampire villager some wheat to get emeralds, and then I traded another vampire villager to get some pure blood. Shall we make a trade? A trade, you say? Thank you for the deal. Goodbye now. I took the blood with me and went home to get some rest. On nights 27 through 31, I traveled to a nearby swamp. I then found a little goblin who was fighting a crocodile. He looked like he was losing, so I decided to step in. I'm here to help. I helped the goblin fight against the crocodile, using my sword to take him down. Stay back. I got this. I finally killed the crocodile, and the goblin came to thank me for helping him. 
thank you so much for helping me. I thought I was going to get eaten alive. I'm happy I could get here on time. He then told me that if I followed him back to his castle, his king would reward me. Okay, lead the way. I followed the goblin into the castle and saw that it was filled with all kinds of goblins. The goblin then told me to speak to his king, who was sitting on his throne, ready to greet me. Thank you for saving my little minion. Your efforts are much appreciated. Of course, your highness. I really hate those vampire hunters and werewolves. They have been attacking my goblin subjects and the wolves have been eating us. Well, I will do anything I can to stop them. You better, or else I will personally see that you will die. Oop. <laughs> Kidding. I like you, Bronzo. Though I am feeling some deja vu. Perhaps we knew each other in another life. But I digress from the matter at hand. He then gifted me an umbrella, which I could use to be out in the sunlight. This will help you survive the harsh weather. Vampires like you are sensitive to these conditions. This is perfect. It'll help me on my journey in fighting the alpha wolf. I thanked him and took his gift with me, feeling more prepared for my long travels. On nights 32 through 36, I leveled up and was able to turn into a bat. Whoa, this is awesome. Dracula would be proud. Now that I had turned into a bat, I went flying into a cave and searched for more resources. I then started mining for iron to build my full iron armor set. I gotta be well prepared for this fight. Just then, I started getting attacked by Aras, who were robot-like women with hearts of flint. Ah, where did you ladies come from? They had daggers of flint and used them to fight against me. But I knew that with my unique powers, I would soon defeat them. I killed all the Aras. And every time one of them died, they would drop some flint. I then turned into a bat and flew away. Ooh, this gives me a good idea. I came up with a plan of placing torches all around my base to ward off anybody trying to attack us. This will keep Buffy and I secure from our enemies. I also built a fence around the base so that we could be extra protected before our battle. On nights 37 through 40, I went back into the caves. I need to gather some more materials. I went mining for some diamonds and luckily I found plenty empty in this cave. Nice, this will be more than I need. I use the diamonds to build a sword and a pickaxe. Heck yeah, now I'm unstoppable. With my new tools, I went back home to expand my base by adding a basement. This will be good for storing all of my blood. I then made a bunch of blood containers. I would then place in my new basement. After I was done, I had an unexpected visitor. Dracula decided to pay me a visit. Hello, may I enter your chamber? Dracula, come inside. I gotta show you my new stuff. I welcomed Dracula inside my base and he then told me about the rule that all vampires must do before entering a home. You see, vampires may only enter after asking for permission. Except for me. My premises are open to everyone. Oh, wow. I don't think I have been following that rule. What do you mean you haven't been following it? I physically cannot come into a new building without asking for permission. I don't know. I just kind of walk in. Oh, you millennials, you have it so easy. Next, you'll be telling me that the sunlight does not instantly kill you and it just makes you sparkle. Eh, I don't know much about the sparkling thing. Well, whatever. I have some stuff for you to help you with your vegan thing. Honestly, I don't see how killing cows makes me a vegan. Kind of feels like the opposite. Do you want my gifts or not? Oh, sorry. Yes, uh, I want them. He then gave me a recipe I could use to make more meat grinders and blood sieves. Oh, thanks. I still can't get over the taste. This will be very helpful. I then thought about how I may need some quartz in order to get this recipe started. But then Dracula offered to save me a trip to the nether. Take these quartz. I am always stocked up on fine resources. I then started making a few grinders and sieves and placed them on some of the blood containers I finished building. Perfect. Now I'm ready to get some Meat. On nights 41 through 43, I went mining for more diamonds before hunting. I'm gonna have the toughest armor in the game. With all the diamonds I collected, I was able to make some boots and a chest plate. After building my armor, I then went hunting for a lot of different animals I found along the way, such as cows, chickens, pigs, and more. I gathered all the meat for my hunting journey and took it back with me to fill inside of my empty grinders. I arrived back home and began grinding all the meat, collecting lots of blood. I was ready to become stronger, but when I tried to level up, I couldn't. What?
What the heck? I must need a stronger altar for this to work. Just then, I saw Luca come back and greet me. Hey! Luca! How's it been? You'll never believe what happened to me. What happened? Yes! You killed the Alpha Wolf? Ha! I wish. Nah, but it's still super cool. Keep guessing. You learned how to disguise yourself as a vampire hunter? Not yet, but I'm getting closer to doing that. Wait, did you? I leveled up to level five. I gotta show you how I did it. He then told me that I needed to create an altar of infusion in order to level up. So I needed to go find all the necessary resources. On nights 44 through 49, I went out to collect materials to upgrade my altar. According to Luca, I'm gonna need some stone and lots of it. I traveled the Badlands to gather some supplies and figured I could use a change of scenery. The Badlands is where it's at. Hopefully I find what I need. I then entered a cave and found a lot of iron to mine. I was able to smelt 53 ingots to be exact. Nice, I only need 48, so this should be good. I made my way through the cave and found a ton of stone. Oh, check out this cool obsidian. I'm definitely gonna need this. I took four obsidian and two gold ingots and made my way out of the cave. I then smelted all the stone and turned it into stone bricks. Now I can finally level up. When I leveled up, I got a brand new power. I had the ability to summon bats and they could aid me in my battle. So I went looking for someone to fight against. I found a couple of Cyclops and began to battle, killing all of them thanks to the help of some of my bat friends. From nights 50 through 53, I gathered more iron to make a stronger altar. I had all the materials I needed and was ready for my new powers. Whoa, all this energy is rushing through me. I gained the ability Vampire Rage. I noticed that it made me much faster and I even dealt more damage than before. I gotta test out my new abilities. I found some creepers nearby and started testing out my new skills against them. The creepers then started running away as I used my Vampire Rage. Oh wow, now my blood bar goes down faster when I use my rage. I then ran into some vampire hunters and werewolves. Werewolves, attack! Steve had enabled the battle to begin, so I used my powers to kill all the werewolves. When I killed the werewolves, some of them dropped liver. I wouldn't normally like liver, but in the midst of battle, it was scrumptious. Good grief, this vamp is not like any other ones. We must run away. Steve chickened out and ran away with all the other vampire hunters. Just then, I approached the alpha wolf and I really wanted to fight, but I realized I was just so tired after that battle. <sighs> I've been doing a lot of fighting today. This won't be good. Well, well, well. Seems like you've been quite victorious lately. The alpha wolf then vanished and I was now more determined to defeat him, knowing that this would be a great challenge to embark on. On nights 54 through 58, I figured out how I could become stronger if I wanted to defeat the Alpha Wolf. I'm going to need some intense training to get my skills on point. Luckily, Dracula was the perfect guy to help me improve my attacks. Dracula, teach me your ways. Ah, perfect timing. I was just about to head out for a stroll. We started by flying across various landscapes and fought some husks in a desert. This will help you and your skills with the sword. After fighting the husks, we returned to my base. I was able to level up and got the ability Frugal Vampire. This is great. Now I won't have to drink that nasty blood as often. You've done a great job, Bronzo. Here, take this heart seeker. I thanked him for the heart seeker, but noticed it was so weak and only did 2.8 damage. If you get a blood pedestal, you can charge it with the blood to make it stronger. Okay, good to know. I thanked Dracula for the great training session and then he flew away. On nights 59 through 62, I went mining for some gold. I then went deeper into the cave to mine for some obsidian. I even gathered some more diamonds along the way. Cool, now I can make a diamond helmet and diamond leggings. All of a sudden, some arachnid, stone-like spiders with one eye, appeared and started attacking me. My sword didn't seem to do much damage. It even sounded like I was hitting a stone. I gotta use another weapon. Instead of my sword, I used my pickaxe to break through its carapace and defeat the arachnid. After killing them, I escaped the cave and went home to do some smelting. I can't wait to build my blood pedestal. After smelting all the gold I had gotten, I made the new pedestal and placed my Heartseeker sword on the pedestal, and it charged up, making it stronger than ever before. Wow! My sword went up to 10 damage. Then I used the rest of my gold to upgrade my altar. 
With this new level, I gained a new power, Dark Blood Projectile, allowing me to shoot blood projectiles that deal damage to my opponents. I'm gonna kill the Alpha Wolf with this new power. I then went out to train with my new sword and my new ability. I found a bunch of zombies in a field not far away. All right, time to die again. The more I trained with my sword, the faster it became. So I then used it to kill a bunch of zombies, as well as my new projectile blood power. I could feel myself becoming one with my sword. All right, I got everything I need. Time to go looking for more answers. On night 63 through 66, I began exploring the vampire forest to find answers for some of my questions. I need to find out how I'm going to stop the alpha wolf. I immediately ran into some pixies. They were hanging outside their cute mushroom homes. Hi there, little fairies. Do you happen to know anything about the alpha wolf? One of the pixies approached me and started complaining about how much she hated them. Oh, yes, we hate those werewolves. They make too much noise and howl all night. Do you know how I could possibly kill him? He's planning an attack against my species. I need to stop him before it's too late. Hmm, I don't quite know how to do that, but perhaps some silver can do the trick? Here, take some. As the pixie and I discussed my attack, an arrow landed right between us. Whoa, who's there? I then saw that it was Steve who shot the arrow. He was trying to hunt me. Get away from that innocent pixie, you bloodthirsty ghoul. I got a blast. Thanks for the help. I took the silver she gave me and ran away before Steve had a chance to hunt me. I'm out of here. See ya. I'll get you one day, bat. On day 67 through 70, I was able to lose Steve, but then ran into some werewolves. I need to stand my ground and fight. I then saw that I was outnumbered by all the werewolves, but luckily for me, I had my army of bats to help me fight. Eat my sword, you freaks. I unleashed my vampire rage and began to attack. Some of the werewolves got a few bites on me, but eventually I was able to win the fight. Ah, I'm in pain. Thankfully, I killed all of them. I spoke too soon because one of the werewolves appeared and told me some bad news. This isn't the end. We have your little vampire friend, Luca, in the coldest place on earth. Good luck trying to get him back. This news was so unsettling that I had to kill this werewolf before I left. I started up my vampire rage on this werewolf and I killed them. Luca, I'm going to save you. The werewolf told me that they had Luca captured in the tundra. So that's where I needed to go. On day 71 through 74, I returned back home to increase my power once more. I need to become stronger so that I can rescue Luca. I then powered up to level 11, unlocking the ability Frugal Vampire, which decreased my thirst for blood. I'm really starting to feel like a full-fledged vampire now. I was so excited to test out my new powers. Luckily, some pesky crimson mosquitoes were flying around my base and Buffy helped me fight. Now's my time to shine. However, these giant mosquitoes were unlike any I had ever seen. They shot blood at me and even sucked my face. Okay, now I'm reminded on how it feels to get my blood sucked. The tables have turned. There was lots of blood, sweat, and tears in that fight, but I eventually killed them all. We made a good team. So where are you going next? I need to find Luca. After talking to Buffy, I then headed out to go rescue Luca. On night 75 through 78, I reached the tundra where Luca was supposed to be. Luca could be anywhere. I need to keep my eyes peeled. As I entered the grounds, I noticed there was nothing there and nobody in sight. Just then, Steve approached me and I knew this was a trap. You came at the perfect time. You're not taking Luca from me. I'm more powerful than ever before. He started attacking me, so I fought back, using my new powers against him. It was a hard battle with Steve, since he started using his anti-vampire gear, such as a crossbow and a stake, to fight against me. Say goodbye, you pale freak. Unfortunately, Steve threw a potion of nausea at me, and I started passing out. Where did you go? Oh no, I don't feel so good. The last thing I could see was Steve over me, saying he was holding me hostage, and knew I was about to enter a horrible state. On nights 79 through 84, I woke up in Steve's campgrounds. Uh, where am I? Steve then came up to me while I was locked up and started questioning my motives. So what makes you think sucking the blood of innocent lives makes you worthy of surviving, huh? No, you got it all wrong. I'm actually trying to protect humans. Steve didn't believe me, so I then told him about how the Alpha Wolf was using him and his vampire hunters to take down Dracula and everyone else. Too late. The Alpha Wolf is on his way to Dracula's location. This should be interesting. Suddenly, I heard a loud yell come from farther away. 
My men must be in danger. Stay here. I couldn't convince Steve, but luckily I saw Buffy on her way to save me, and she tried using her stake to break the cage open. Uh, don't worry, Buffy. I can fly out of this. Bronzo, I was so worried about you. I told Buffy about Steve and the Alpha Wolf's plan, and then we quickly left so that I could go warn Dracula before it was too late. On nights 85 through 89, I arrived at Dracula's home. Oh no, he's already in battle. I need to help him. I wanted to join in the fight against the Alpha Wolf to protect Dracula, but it was too late. Dracula! The Alpha Wolf left Dracula in his final moments and then ran away in laughter, leaving me feeling hopeless. Bronzo, avenge me and all the other vampires. The map and everything else you will need is in my basement. You can't die on me now, Dracula. I'm not powerful enough to do this without you. Hurry up, will you? I'm dying here. <clears throat> Dracula took his last breaths, and before I knew it, he was gone. No! Darn you, Alpha Wolf! It was now nights 90 through 93, and I booked it towards the basement to see what Dracula had left for me. And to my surprise, his basement was filled with hundreds of blood containers and the map to Steve's camp. This place is insane. I took all the equipment in the chest and used the final altar. So much power! I had a bunch of new abilities, such as being able to disguise myself and invisibility. I left Dracula's base and eventually found myself at Steve's campgrounds. There, I disguised myself as a vampire hunter so I could blend in before killing Steve. Hello, my friendly camp leader. Uh, are you okay? You're acting funny. E yes, everything is all good in the neighborhood. He seems fine to me. Hmm, all right, good to hear. Suddenly, the camp was attacked by the Alpha Wolf and his werewolf minions. Going ghost! The Alpha Wolf tore the camp to shreds. Eventually, all that was left standing was Steve. What the heck? You're betraying me? You were being played from the beginning, you weak human. Then, the Alpha Wolf lunged at Steve and killed him! I can sense you're here. Aren't you glad I got rid of your biggest rival? Not so fast, you wolf. You're my biggest rival, and I'm going to take you down. Ah, good luck. I'll be waiting. You can sniff me out when you're ready to die. I let the Alpha Wolf leave. I still have about five more days before the challenge is over, so I wanted to save the final battle till then. In the meantime, I went back home to plan my next move. On nights 94 through 96, I noticed my rage was increasing, making me want to bite Buffy. Ugh, I, I just can't resist. I took a bite from Buffy, turning her into a vampire. Ah! Oh, that hurt me. I'm sorry, Buffy. I couldn't control myself. Suddenly, the pain stopped, and Buffy started to look happy about what I had just done. Whoa, this power rushing through me feels amazing. Thank you for that. Surprisingly, Buffy was glad to be a vampire now, but unfortunately, I had to tell her about the terrible news. Dracula is dead? Oh, you need to be the new leader then. Here, take this with you. Buffy then gave me a bat wing potion, which gave me so much strength and bat wings, so I didn't have to turn into a bat when I wanted to fly. With the help of her gift, I became the new vampire leader and was ready to take down the wolf. Thank you, Buffy! Look at me! I'm Batman! On nights 97 and 98, I traveled around the world, killing giants and unique beasts to level up my sword. I headed to the Badlands and battled against an Oilerus, a giant wither dinosaur that could blind me and had wither skeleton minions. I used my sword to kill it and headed off into the desert. There, I approached a Fluto Queen that shot Fluton everywhere. It even spawned several of its Fluton babies. I then traveled to a nearby swamp that had a pesky Lidrico and used my vampire rage while they used their spiky tentacles to attack me. After tackling all the giant beasts, I now felt ready to defeat my enemy. There's one more thing I gotta do before our fight. I returned home for night 99 to tell Buffy my plans. What? By yourself? I wanna help take down the Alpha Wolf too. 
You can't. It's too dangerous. I have to do this alone for Dracula. Then what can I do to help? Well, there is one thing. You could subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell so you never miss any new Bronzo content. You got it. I was about to leave, but Buffy stopped me. Hopefully, I'll make it back alive. Wait, one more thing. You'll need this. It's made of silver, the only thing that can kill a werewolf that powerful. Oh, this will really help. Thanks, Buffy. I set off for the Alpha Wolf. Along the way, I ran into some of his foot soldiers, white wolves. You want some of what your leader is going to get? Then bring it on. The wolves put up a fair fight, but it wasn't enough to stop me. And stay down. All I got to do is the same with the Alpha Wolf. I headed straight towards his hideout. On night 100, it was finally time to confront the Alpha Werewolf. It's a full moon, my friend. There's no way of stopping me now. Not even a full moon can help you. I'm stronger than Dracula, and I'm gonna make sure you pay for his death. I'd like to see you try. While using his speed to his advantage, he brought out his phantasmic sword to shoot ghostly swords at me. Also using his evoker fang to summon biting teeth from the ground. It was now or never. I used all my powers in combination, such as bat summoning, blood projectile, and my heart seeker to weaken the beast. After a long battle, the alpha wolf was weakened and couldn't survive another round with me. I finally used my silver sword and destroyed him. Hasta la vista, baby. Hey, yeah. 